my name is Dr. Margo Kwiatkowski, and I'm a pelvic floor physical therapist here to talk to you today about pelvic floor dysfunction. Did you know that one in three women will experience pelvic floor dysfunction in their life? One in four in the United States. First thing you do with your perifit is calibrate it. So you're going to do a series of relaxations and contractions. After this, it's going to ask you to cough once. There's my cough here. And now it'll give me my strength assessment. Next, it's going to have you work through isolating your pelvic floor versus your intra-abdominal pressure. So this first one is a pelvic floor contraction. Pelvic floor values are high, abs are low. You're going to get some abs, it's not going to be zero. This one's me bearing down. Notice that my pelvic floor doesn't get very high, kind of wavers, and abs are up pretty high. This is me doing a pelvic floor contraction first and then bearing down at the end. My abs go all the way up into the mid to high 40s. That didn't happen on the original one. Go back if you want to see it. This is a pretty cool feature for those of you who are really visual learners. You can watch your pelvic floor muscles contract from underneath or above or the side. You can move this little model around. And then on the bottom right, you can see your quality meter. So you're working on staying in the green. Here's one of the games. It shows you the directions first, and then you can start to play. What I like about the games is there's usually a very long relaxation period, which is fantastic. So with our pelvic floor, you guys know how important it is to have length and the ability to relax. So here comes a contraction. You're going to slowly grade up, maintain the contraction at the top, and then slowly lower back down, which is a struggle for me. I usually just dump out and totally let go. And then here's another really long relaxation phase. So in between the strengthening, you really work on length and relaxing. So this one was pretty cool. It's actually going to show us what they call a 5D representation of the pelvic floor function. So it's testing five different aspects and you'll see it mapped out at the end. So that one was my ability to hold a strong contraction and now it's kind of my ability to coordinate, to have endurance, like to hold, 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 and then slowly relax. Yeah, I usually just let go completely. I have a hard time slowing down the relaxation. Next is repeated contractions. So you're basically getting the fly to jump, and then relax, jump, relax. Now, again, there is a lot more in this app than just what I've shown you. So it has a ton of quick start information. If you're new to this and not sure how to use it, there's various games and how to play them. Some of the basics about what even is a Kegel, Pelvic Floor 101, different ways to monitor your progress for those of you who have different goals. What I also love is that there's programs and then there's also an, a community. I'm not going to show this to you because it shows people's names. Hi, my name is Dr. Margo Kwiatkowski, and I'm a pelvic floor physical therapist here to talk to you today about pelvic floor dysfunction. Did you know that one in three women will experience pelvic floor dysfunction in their life? One in four in the United States. Great questions coming in about PeriFit and my recommendations in certain conditions. So do I recommend it if you lean on the hypertonic side of things? For people with pelvic pain, hypertonicity, all that stuff, your first line of action needs to be to address that. For my patients, so personally, when I have patients who have a lot of tension, I'm not teaching them how to do Kegels as a means of strengthening. I might have them do a partial contraction in order to fully relax. So a lot of people who are holding, 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 they don't really get the concept or the sensation of letting go until they contract 20% and then inhale and feel more of that muscle excursion, if that makes sense. So this could be helpful in that sense. Um, it really depends on your situation, though. It 
does not directly relax your pelvic floor muscles. So you have to have a good sense and ability and awareness of how to relax your pelvic floor so that in between the cycles of strengthening, you are completely relaxing. So if you don't have a good concept of how to do that, maybe this wouldn't be the best place to start until you learn how to do that. Or on the flip side, if you don't have access to someone who can actually walk you through how to do this, like a pelvic floor therapist, the PeriFit could tell you if you're contracting or relaxing. So again, it's like really, really hard to make these general recommendations, as you guys know, but hopefully some of these answers will help you kind of figure out if this device would be good for you or not. There's a few different things we need to break down here. So what this person's referring to is called an electrical stimulation unit, an e-stim. So when someone gets uh, like pelvic floor therapy, sometimes they use a probe or device intervaginally and it actually sends an electrical stimulus to the muscles to facilitate a contraction and then you contract with it to increase your strength. So this is called NMES, neuromuscular electrical stimulation. Then there's something called biofeedback. So biofeedback just means that it's some sort of device that uses a sensation, whether, whether it's like auditory, visual, sensory, like um, proprioception or anything like that, to tell you if you are contracting or relaxing and to help you facilitate a contraction or relaxation. More next. The PeriFit device would be considered a biofeedback device because it uses visual sensory information on the app on your phone to tell you if you are contracting or relaxing properly. It doesn't have any component like vibration that helps cue you to contract the correct muscles or not. Um, some other devices do that. So it really depends on what is helpful for you. So if you are really good with like seeing if you're doing it properly, this would be really awesome for you. They also have um, an auditory component on there as well for those of you who are more auditory learners but it does not have the ability to just insert it and it contracts and you don't do anything. If someone's telling you that that's what you should be doing, that there is a device that you can just sit there and let it contract for you and you don't have to do anything, run. There is no such thing as a device or tool or technology that will contract your pelvic floor muscles for you where you don't do anything and you'll have lasting effects. I know some people are going to be like, well, what about Mcella, that chair that you sit on that contracts your pelvic floor muscles? I haven't seen a single long-term study from Mcella about Mcella. So what that chair does is you like literally sit on it and it sends really strong contraction forces, but it's not specific. So you're going to get glute contractions. You're going to get inner thigh contractions. You're going to get deep hip rotator. Um, so it's not just the pelvic floor. So for those of you who are hypertonic, Probably not a good idea to be doing something like that. And then it's not functional, and then you're not actually learning how to do it yourself, so you're not getting any carryover into your day-to-day -day life. And again, no long-term studies. If I had an answer to this question for everyone who asks it, I'd quit my job. <laughs> um, I don't know why this is happening to you. There are so many reasons why someone is not developing good strength. The number one thing is going to be um, tension. So if you for sure have addressed your tension really well and you're still not developing strength, I would be curious about things like an avulsion. I'd be curious about getting maybe a nerve conduction study done. Um, when your physical therapist feels your pelvic floor, does it feel strong? Have you been tested on your strength in functional positions? Some people just freaking can't contract their pelvic floor lying on their back, but you have them squat and it's like, great. So I don't worry about it. So I would be curious about those types of things instead.